All right, everyone. And now I'm so excited to be joined by none other than Kelly Stafford. She is the host of the Morning After podcast. She is a registered nurse, also a mother of four. And last but not least, she is the better half of Rams quarterback, Matt Stafford. Uh, okay, <laughs> so you, you, have, you have so many different titles, uh, so many <laughs> things to be proud of. But I, of course, had to mention first what identified you as you. Obviously, no one wants to be identified by the man that they're married to, although I know that you care about him so much and is a huge part of your life. But my first question to you is, how do you make sure that you maintain being just you and you don't fall into that category of, oh, I'm just the wife of an NFL quarterback? Um, well, to be honest, I think that took time. Um, when I, I think when I moved to Michigan, I was 19. Uh, Matthew and I were not engaged or anything like that. And I quickly fell into the that category. Um, and I stayed in it for quite some time. And to be honest, it was part, probably the hardest part of my life because I've always felt like I've had my own identity. I'm very outgoing. Um, I love making friends. So I felt like that was like part of me. And then all of a sudden I'm thrown into this box where I felt like almost I was getting burned by people like my, you know what I'm saying? I'm my heart. I wanted to make me friends in Michigan, all these things. And then all of a sudden people were just making friends with me because of who I was uh, dating. So, um, it quickly just kind of, I started learning from it, um, and saying, you know what, I've got to continue to be me, but also I do have to just realize that some people don't have the best intention. So it's, it was a balancing act. It was learning. I mean, it took me quite some time to just not care also what people thought. Um, and not that, you know, you don't care, but you have to realize the ones that matter, the ones that know you personally and who love you, um, and not the, you know, keyboard warriors or anything like that. Yeah. So well, the keyboard warriors are in a class of their own, uh, yeah. that, yeah. but even just in, in everyday life, of course, there's always going to be people who come in and come out with different right. intentions, different motivations. And you are, you, from what I know about you, you have a great head on your shoulders. So I'm sure you can probably recognize those people from a mile away. Yeah, I've gotten definitely gotten better at it. Um, there's still certain times where I'm like, wow. And honestly, Matthew's really, really good at figuring that out quick. Um, I just feel like I'm trying to always look for, I don't know, the best in people. And I'm like, no, they're good. And all of a sudden I get burned again. So it's still a learning process. I feel like it's always going to be one of those things that you just kind of have to learn as you go, which is, I feel like is life anyways, any role you play in life, you're learning as you're going. Um, but I will say being young, that young and being labeled as that, it quickly became my identity and I worried about it. Um, I worried about what I looked like. I worried about, I mean, everything. Oh, yeah. You know? The only thing I guess I didn't worry about is what I said because I kept getting in trouble. But <laughs> I wear my, I do wear my heart on my sleeve. Um, I'm very loyal to the people I love. So you say something bad about someone I love, I'm going to have a problem staying silent about it. But I've learned, I've learned over time too that I can't necessarily jump the gun on that either. Well, that's why you're a podcast host, right? If you didn't say what was on your mind and you didn't have an interesting things to say, probably you wouldn't have a, a, a major listening base like you do right now. Um, so going back to the beginning, just because it, it just interests me, you know, the whole yeah. life of WAGs, you know, we, there was this whole TV show about it for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. When you were in college and you met your now husband, and obviously he was already a successful player in college and had, you know, a lot of people already saying he was going to go far and make it into the league and do big things. Yes. But did you never imagine you would be in the position you're in right now? I mean, that's probably not something you assume when you're a young girl doing your own thing at college for your own reasons. Oh, no. And if you knew Matthew, everyone who knew Matthew and I in college probably are as surprised as we are that we are married and have four <laughs> kids. Um, you know, college was a really fun time. And I was always a relationship person. Matthew was not. So that created some dynamics that weren't great. Um, but in the end, obviously we ended up together, but I will say, I mean, the whole, like, again, sorry, I don't even remember the question. <laughs> it's <laughs> been a long morning. I have two sick ones. You sound like me right now. Um, sorry. no, I was just asking like, you know, you, here you are in college. Next thing you know, you're dating oh. the star quarterback and then you are in a full blown relationship. And then next thing you know, you're married and you have all the kids and now you're, you're where you are. I mean, you never would have expected that to be probably the direction your life would take you in because how no, would you No, to be honest, when he told me he was leaving for the draft, I was like, okay, it's been fun. <laughs> um, you know, I honestly didn't expect anything to come of it. I loved the guy, but again, he was, 
going to be an NFL quarterback. And in Georgia, it's all about college sports. So I didn't know much. I knew the NFL, obviously I'm a sports girl, but like, didn't know the ins and outs of like the draft or anything like that. Cause the foul, like now the Falcons are kind of big, but back in the day, it was all about UGA football. We were all about college sports down there. So again, I was just like, okay, well, <laughs> see you <Bye>. later. <laughs> also geography is not my strong suit. So when he was like, I'm going to Detroit, I was like, I don't, I don't know where that is, which is terrible to say. I missed the whole geography when I transferred school. So that's my excuse. But um, no, it was as surprising, I think, to both of us as it was to everybody else that when we like he left, um, how much we kind of were like, wait a second, this was honestly awesome and easy and we were best friends. And so it was just it took a little bit, but we reconnected. And, you know, after that, he, I remember him calling me from the training facility out in Arizona being like, Hey, I don't want you to see anyone else. I was like, what? Wow. I was like, wait, what are you talking about? We've never dated. And now you're long gone. And now you want to date. He's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, well, great. I've been wanting this the whole time. So I'm in. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's so interesting too, because I love, I love this love story. And I love that you, you know, really started this when you both were, you know, it went before he really turned into what he is now. Uh, you obviously have come so far since then too. And I, I love where it started. And I love that it had such innocent beginnings because you do see a lot of times now athletes, big time athletes just dating around. And, you know, let's be honest, a lot of the girls, you see them running around with, uh, a lot of them can't be taken so seriously. And, and this is, goes back to the point of knowing what people's intentions and motivations are. You know, you have a lot of people that like you, you didn't start dating him because you saw this being your life. This just happened. And you're like, oh my gosh. Okay. Well, this is, this is where my life's taking me. Let's go with it. But there are some women who purposely insert themselves into a picture because they want to be married to a star NFL player. Uh, yes. how, how does that make you feel when, when you realize that the relationships like yours exist? Uh, and those are the ones that I think are the most meaningful. And then you have, you know, I won't necessarily call them teammates of your husband, right. but there's guys all over the league who are finding themselves in very superficial relationships with women who aren't taking it the same way that you were. Yes. I I obviously can't speak on those relationships because I don't know the ins and outs of them, but I will say one thing. I don't love how all the quote unquote wags are put into this one box when really a bunch of us or some of us are either high school sweethearts or college sweethearts, knowing them far before it all, far before there was any money involved, um, which again, we are so blessed in this life and I don't want to, you know, sit here and just be like, money's not anything, but money is just a thing. Like the relationship I tr is what matters. And it's something we try to tell our girls all the time. Listen, you can have all these things. You can have the spotlight. You can be, you know, somebody else's husband or wife, but in the end, the relationships between you and your significant other or you and your friends, you and your family are the most important things. And I do, that's the one thing that I struggle with when it, and now I'm old in this game, which is so crazy to me. <laughs> Please. <I'm old. laughs> I know, but in this game, like I'm one of the oldest damn wives in this whole thing. And um, looking at it from, you know, that perspective now, it's kind of, you look at the relationships that you see and you just, you know, the ones that are real and the ones that aren't. And you just hope that, honestly, whoever's involved in those relationships kind of just come to their senses and be like, okay, that was fun, but maybe I want to find something that's truly real. But I do think it's hard. Matthew's very good at it, but I don't know if most people are good at finding the ones that have the right intentions. Like they can be played real quick. Oh, um, just like I am there, as a friend. In yeah. There. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It happens. It all happens all over the place, whether or not you're a celebrity athlete or not. Uh, a lot of right. people come in and out for the right and wrong reasons. Right. Uh, you have four girls. Yeah. Uh, how old are your daughters? Uh, six, six, five, and three. Okay. So they're still very young. Um, mm -hmm. but, but, you know, having the foundations like you and Matt do and being able to teach them and set forward the examples that you want them to live their lives by uh, can be tough, especially when you're in a place like LA. Detroit oh. is a different story. LA, a whole different ball game. Yes. Uh, LA arguably considered the most superficial place in this entire country. Mm -hmm. How do you make sure that your girls are growing up with the right examples? Because I mean, if you, if, when I think of LA, I'm thinking Kardashians, like that's, the mindset of a lot of people. So how do you teach these girls, 
you know, when, when this is the example that they're seeing all over the place, like, listen, this is, this is real life. I think to be honest, um, part of the part of how we do it is just leading by example. I mean, Matthew and I didn't grow up the way we're raising our children. We didn't grow up with all this, you know, financial support. Um, but I think just showing them, you know, I, I rarely, I'm always in workout stuff. I am rarely done up. Um, just showing them like example by that, be like, Hey, it's, it's not what you look like. And they know that we ask them every night, what makes you beautiful? And they say our hearts. And I think, and it's, and it's true. Like, you know, again, we're just trying to make sure that they realize they are beautiful from the inside and that the things that are important in life, like we, I said earlier, are relationships. And so when you're in this type of place, and again, Detroit was definitely different. Um, I think just re in, like instilling those values every day, just reminding them what's important, you know, and things like that, because we are surrounded. I mean, who you said they're our neighbors and, you know, and they go to these extravagant birthday parties. And I tell them, I say, Hey, this is amazing, right? Wow. We should be so grateful that we were invited to enjoy this. I love you, but you will not be having this type of birthday. <laughs> um, you can invite if they do, please invite me. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, I will, but it's gonna be like a backyard barbecue with some hot dogs and the pool. Yeah. I mean, you have a pool. I'm, I'm like, exactly. I didn't grow up with a pool. So um, anyways, it's it, it definitely is difficult, but I do feel like if you yourself and your and Matthew will speaking on us stay grounded, which we do that through our relationships, our high school and college friends who we love and adore our families. Um, we've kept them close because we, we've known their intentions all along. Um, and so again, like my three best friends are my three high school basketball teammates. Wow. Um, and they come out, we do a year, like, so just making sure we stay grounded so that we can keep setting these examples for our children, um, that are the right example. Yeah. Uh, Something that you experienced uh, a few years ago in 2019, you had a brain tumor removed. Yes. I think a lot of people aren't aware of that part of your life, uh, but I have to imagine, I mean, we talk about having the right mindset. I have to imagine that even took it a step further where you just approach things from such a different mindset every day now, having gone through something like that. Yeah, it was, um, it was definitely a challenging time in Matthew and I's life, both and my, like everyone else that's reported me, but um. I, I would say the hardest part was I had three little ones at that point. I had a six month year old and just two year olds or no, they weren't even two yet when I got diagnosed. Um, and so that was, I think my biggest fear was just not being there. Now it was not, I want to put this out there because this gets confused all the time. It was not cancerous. It was benign. It was sitting on three of my cranial nerves, one being my balance Um, and so that's how I figured out I had it. I was getting these spells of vertigo. Um, but when I went in or when I got, had my brain scanned, um, we really thought it was nothing. I was like, eh, cause I feel like I get these like weird sicknesses. I don't know why. (laughs) And it turns out like, I just need to eat something different or whatever. And I'm like, okay, something's going on. I'll figure it out. Um, never expected to walk into a neuro Institute and then tell me that I had a brain tumor that was a decent size and wow. give me options. That was the hardest part. They gave me options. What kind of options do you get under those circumstances? So a lot of people come in with this uh, type of tumor and say, I've lost my hearing. That was not the case with me. I had full hearing. Right. Um, and if they do surgery, you can lose your hearing. So the they're like, we'll see how fast growing it is. If it's fast growing, we need to take it out because it's going to ruin your hearing anyways. Um, but you can also, if it grows, it can grow into your brainstem and it can also grow and affect your facial function. Um, cause one of the nerves it was sitting on, it's the facial nerve, the balance nerve and the auditory nerve. So your hearing nerve. Um, and I went around, Matthew actually researched all the doctors. We went, we actually found one of the best ones in our backyard in Michigan. Um, and he said something that honestly, which sounds so superficial, but it's so true. And I hate to say it. He said, listen, you, your life won't change if you lose your hearing or, you know, if you have to relearn to walk and balance and all these things, your life will change if you have a complete Bell's palsy on your right side. And that to be honest, I hate, I mean, I hate to say that, but it's true. 
you know, you can reteach yourself all these things about balance. And that's what I had to do. Um, and then hearing you still have another ear. So it was very much, I looked at it and he was like, if it's sticky to your facial nerve, I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to leave some of it because that will, that will change your life. And I, again, yeah. it sounds so superficial, but it was I mean, true. It's true. A lot of times, times things though, that are superficial in life are the things that ultimately affect you the most. It's just how it is. I know. And I hate, I hate that, but I looked at him. I was like, okay, let's, let's take it out. The other options are like, watch it or radiate it. I'm not a watch and see kind of girl. I am like, get let's it deal out. with it now. Right. So yeah. it doesn't weigh on you every morning when you wake up and mm -hmm. go to bed at night, of course. Yeah. Or when I wake up one morning, I'm like, lost my hearing. Okay. Yeah. Now it's gone. Now we go in or do we yeah. chance maybe it losing it during surgery and maybe not. So. Yeah. Okay. So that's, I'm, I commend you. You're an inspiration for going through that. I mean, to be able to, to do that and still be a wife and mother and, and maintain your livelihood is, is something that really should be recognized. Um, to, to kind of, uh, very harshly switch, switch, switch subjects, um, <laughs> okay. because I don't really know how to pivot out of that one. Um, in a no, you're time. fine. It's always heavy. You're good. But also an inspiration because you already referred to yourself as one of the OGs in the game. You're like, I'm one of the oldest here, but first of all, you don't look at, you look incredible. Uh, okay. Your game day Quite. looks are next level. Uh, oh. I really appreciate the thought and creativity that goes into your game day look. So oh gosh. How, are these like done by on like a week to week basis? Or do you do this like preseason? Like you come up with your, your well, I, inspo? I'm not sure what season you're looking at. If you're looking at like this season and last season, <laughs> that was like, wake up in the morning and throw on what I had. <laughs> Okay, oh, then maybe I'm looking at past seasons. You probably are looking at the Super Bowl season, which uh, was fun. I had a good time. I had uh, this girl, Mary, who is actually in Michigan. Um, she came out and just like threw together some outfits, got some like, or oh, I almost said lions, uh, Ram stuff like done and um, made it really easy for me to wake up and just go to the game. She was great. Now I'm not, again, I am not very good about, uh, getting dressed up doing that so half the time she texts me and be like you wore the outfit and you wore no makeup and I'm like okay Mary you're like what do you want for the other? other it's one or the other and I have four kids I don't I there it's the timing doesn't work it's easier I gotta get them ready so I mean and I know women who get the full glam every yeah. game that's a lot it's a lot I, I, I know. Well, there's some people that get the full glam, not even on game days. Like that's just their normal go-to routine when they wake up. And that's beyond me because I'm tiring. Same, I have to wear makeup for television, but if I'm not on TV, like get me as far away from looking cute as you possibly can. No, it's it, one, it's tiring. You got to take it off. You are, my face breaks <laughs> out. I have no interest. I'm 34. I don't want zits. No makeup is just better for me. So <laughs> absolutely. Well, one way that you can prevent the breakouts, and I know something you take seriously, is your fitness and nutrition. So I want to hear the details of your routines in both of those categories. Um, to be honest, I always say to be honest, I don't know why. Um, <laughs> no, I working out has always been a part of my life. I have uh been involved in sports my whole life. So when I graduated college, um, it was on me instead of a sport, which was kind of hard to figure out what exactly that looked like. Um, but I will say the one thing that I always tell myself is just to be kind to myself. You know, I would love to work out every day because it gives me these endorphins. It makes me happy. Um, I, I just like the feeling, but at the same time, I have to realize I have four little girls. I have a husband who's busy. And if I can't get a workout in, or if I don't feel like it, I have to be kind to myself and be like, Hey, it's fine. Um, or if I don't have a good workout one day, if I just last like 10 minutes, I'm like, well, at least I tried. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do think that's one thing, like when people jump into fitness or jump, like I did it after college, I'm like, I'm gonna work out every day. You burn yourself out after the first yeah. week. So it's one thing that I try and like balance. I play tennis now, which I love. That's my cardio. I'm not a runner. Um, never been a runner it's always been sports related. So yeah. this, uh, is my cardio. And then I'll just, I have some apps like the aloe apps. Great for like lifting weights, easy, convenient time. Like, you know, it's just tell me what to do. So I don't have to think about it. Yes, exactly. I don't want a trainer. I'm not really good. Like I had some trainers in the past and it's kind of exhausting. Yeah. And like even just getting there, I'd rather just have a couple weights in my living room and watch a show and just, you know, do what Absolutely. I need to do. Um, and it's convenient. Again, I feel like convenience is huge now. 
Um, but the fact that there's so many ways you can work out and it be convenient, convenient, it helps, especially moms or anyone who's busy, people who work. I mean, you can come home and do a 30 minute workout real quick and then watch your shows. So, um, I love, I do love fitness. I love just being involved in anything that re- any sport kind of, I mean, I pick up basketball and tennis are my main two. When it doesn't uh, feel like a workout, it's the best workout. It's easy. Yeah. I can't like, I can't, again, cannot go just run on a treadmill or go climb on a stair stepper or whatever these women do. I don't have yeah. the pay. I like, first of all, I'm not good at it. I can't, I don't know about you. I cannot I mean, run five off. minutes on a treadmill might as well be an hour. And it's awful. Yeah. Yeah, it's and horrible. my knees hurt and my, like my joints hurt. I'm like, okay, well, this is just, isn't for me anymore. Um, so anyways, it's just like, what, you're right. Whatever it doesn't feel like working out is always the best. And to all, I just remind myself, just be kind to myself. If I don't feel the best, let my body rest. But, um, no, I, uh, I do enjoy it a lot though. It just gives me that like good feeling. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and just, I just want to let you know, I'm, I'm very much looking to get into tennis. Cause I feel like that is so like the best workout. Um, as far as your diet, do you have any weird like things that you're into? Like I've started getting really weirdly into certain aspects of my diet. Like there are things that, you know, if you haven't asked me 10 years ago, like, would you, you know, this is something you won't eat anymore. I would have been like, no way. But now I'm, I'm like one of those, um, like conspiracy theorist dieters. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, what conspiracy th- theory diet well, like, are you For example, doing? like canola oil is horrible for you. Like, you know what I mean? Using like only olive oil and avocado oil. Yeah. Like things like that. So I okay. I'm like into that kind of stuff, or I try to eat a lot of red meat versus, you know, there's always been the theory that you should eat less red meat. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if you had anything that was interesting about your diet. <laughs> You know what? When I met Matthew, all I ate was chicken fingers, grilled cheese, <laughs> fries. I was a child. I did not eat any greens. I didn't know what vegetables were. Love my mom. She's an amazing mom. Terrible cook. She'll admit that. There was hamburger helper. One of my favorite stories actually was- And where are you originally from? Georgia. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So one of my favorite stories was we had a cookout at Matthew's place before he left. Sorry, side note. And I was like, oh, huh. I know what I'm going to make. I'm going to make hamburger helper. And, um, cause it's one of the things that yeah. I knew how to, what to do. I brought the box over and I poured it out and we we're all sitting there like trying to make our things. And I was like, wait, where's the, where's the meat? And he looks at me and goes, you did not think the meat came in the box. I was like, you're like, no. yeah, I did. I did. No, Even I though that would be yeah. absolutely disgusting. Right. To be sitting on a shelf no for problem. a month on it. Okay, but like I had, this is like, this was my diet. I had no idea. So when I met him, things changed. I tried so much things. I really eat everything now. Um, I'm not into, I don't have like a specific diet. I will say I just balance things. I am a sweets kind of person. Um, I'm probably addicted to sugar, which is not good. I'm trying to not do that to my children, (laughs) but, um, just balance it all, you know? And I did try the. I will say I tried the intermittent fasting, which was great. Um, when you have four kids and you're feeding them Cheerios in the morning, you kind of go, Oh, you're like, I want a bite of that. Yeah. I want it. some Cheerios. <laughs> so it didn't last very long, but I did try it, but I will say, I just try to balance everything as much as I can. Um, and again, if I, you know, if I have a hard workout, maybe I have some ice cream instead, you know, a little more ice cream than so, I would. So being that your cooking is not your strong suit, uh, no. do you have someone that helps to cook for the family or do you just use your primitive skills. Yeah. Ha, ha, no, okay. I don't have any skills. Uh, yes, we have, his name's uh, chef Chris. We actually brought him from Michigan. Oh, um, okay. he is an amazing, amazing guy. He's our age. He's like one of our best friends, but also is so professional and really good, uh, chef. So, um, super grateful for him. He's like an uncle to my girls. They've known oh. him since they were okay. Born. That's, that's the dream. Like to have someone who comes yeah. into your house and cooks all your meals for you is literally the ultimate dream. The like, dream. Forget, forget all of the, you know, uh, outfits, the jewelry. Right. I just want someone to come in and cook for me. Agreed. That's uh, Matthew and I have this conversation all the time. We're like, all right, if you could only keep one thing and had to give everything else away, like depending on whether it's a person or like something, yeah. a Super Bowl trophy Bye. or whatever he get, we both are like, Chef Chris. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, I, I absolutely 100% am on board with that. Yes. Okay. So finally, we won't ask you, uh, for your cooking advice to be passed along, but <laughs> what advice would you have for the newest wag in the game, which of Ooh. course is Taylor Swift, <laughs> uh, Travis Kelsey's, I, we, I don't even know if like we can still, we can yet call her his girlfriend. You know, there's, 
who knows what's actually who going knows? on, but she's who coming knows? to his games. Um, so what, what advice she already has her own career. It's not like she's, I was we, about to say, I mean, like, I can't be like, Hey, have your own identity. Yeah, no. So, but what, is there anything that like, just knowing the landscape of how it is now, just like a little word of advice to Miss Taylor Swift. Uh, you know what? I think I would say if you don't know enough or a lot about football, I wouldn't try to defend anything that anyone says about Travis <laughs> because you're going to get crushed. I have I'm been so there I, and I know about football. I've been there and I've done it. So to just, you know, and she's probably so good at that because she probably has fans left and right saying crap to her. But, um, but I mean, that would be my main advice and not to like, not by any means to shut up, but just pick your battles. Of course. Of yeah. course. Yeah. Um, I love that. I love everything about this conversation. I'm so happy to have talked with you. You are such a delight. And I love that you are so down to earth because I think a lot of people get impressions of what, and not that I expected this from you. Cause like I mentioned before we even got on, I already kind yeah. of knew a little bit about you, but um, I think wags a lot of times get a little bit of a bad rap because yes. of what they're seen and promoted as, but uh, you are wonderful. And I have so much respect for you and what you're doing on your own uh, as a businesswoman, as a mother, as a wife. And um, I just thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. This was so fun. So easy. I appreciate it. Of course.